There's a look at Castroville, Texas last night. Greg, our drone photographer, getting the shots up at about 300 feet. Very scenic. Things have quieted down across much of the country. That frontal system, which brought thunderstorms to much of the southern U.S., heading out into the Atlantic and behind it, got that cold air sweeping in from Canada back down to the 30s in the Great Lakes region, snow being reported from Toronto to northern Michigan. And then we're looking at 40s and 50s into the Appalachians. The surface high associated with that cold air, the polar air mass, covering much of the central U.S., but we are starting to get the return flow in Texas. We can see that the dew points are still not really coming up just yet. We are seeing 50s and 60s way down to the south, the very start of a dry line, but around Dallas, Austin, Oklahoma City, dew points in the 30s. A lee side trough in eastern New Mexico with a weak front coming down through Colorado, north winds, and 40s in Denver, and then another front up to the north, and the air back behind that is not very cold. But as you go further north, let's take a look at that. Yep, we do have an Arctic air mass, even in early April, temperatures down into the minus 20s. Let's take a look out in the Pacific and... We can see that there is high pressure. This actually looks to be a like a weak frontal system, maybe running about something like that, and possibly linked up to this other system in the North Pacific. That's a little bit off the chart, but yeah, this one right here. Further up to the north, rain making its appearance on the southern Alaska coast. Temperatures into the 30s around Anchorage. Some cold air coming down into the Aleutians, but the coldest air up there on the north slope into Yukon and Northwest Territories. It is minus 12 up at Barrow. I know that town has changed its name, and I don't recall what it was, but quite cold for April. And then further out to the east, another snowstorm moving through Quebec, and the Atlantic looking fairly quiet, warm air advection into Greenland and Iceland, and that's bringing some bad weather in southeastern Greenland where we have that onshore component. So when the weather gets quiet, I like looking at the upper air charts. This is 250 millibars up near the tropopause. It's going to be about 34,000 feet. Strong jet with that system exiting into the Atlantic. If we go back to our rules of thumb about troughs and ridges, I don't know if you remember this from my books or maybe some other synoptic forecasting books, where you have a trough like right here and a ridge downstream, for example, right there, we're going to find a frontal system in between. That's going to be normally around the midpoint along the jet. The jet is going to be where we have the tightest, let me draw that in green, where we have the tightest height contour packing. So that's going to be the strong height gradient. So halfway along that axis right there, that is where we normally expect to find the Bear Clinic low. And we would expect to find a cold front kind of dropping south, maybe a 30, 40 degree angle, something like that. And then a warm front out towards the base of that ridge. Because that thermal ridge that's going to be associated with warm air advection helping to build those heights. And it's the opposite on the west side. Cold air advection coming south, producing height falls. And as a result, we get that upper level troughing. Now, this was about 6 a.m. Let's bring that up to the current time. It's going to be roughly like that. So the trough, the ridge, the midpoint, that's going to be the inflection point right there. And the frontal systems. Is that what we have? Yeah, that's that's not a bad guess. A low over, let's see, that'd be just southeast of Bangor and the cold front down into Florida. And yeah, that's pretty close, pretty close. The actual location was right in here. So that's a rule of thumb you can use. And it even works on these troughs that are coming out of the Rockies where it's kind of hard to find frontal systems initially. That suggests a frontal system kind of like that. And the same thing out to the 
west, maybe something as pictured. So this one, a little bit off, but, you know, we know it's there. And the other, yeah, probably could have analyzed something right in that area. So that's one way that these upper air charts can help you out. So the remaining question is, how will things change over the weekend into next week? So let's consider the large-scale pattern. It's definitely zonal. The jet mostly going like that instead of like that. Any troughs, ridges at, at the uh, long wave scales? Not really sure. I think there's probably long wave troughing in here and maybe a ridge way out to the west. It's kind of hard to tell at this scale. But let's see what happens over the next few days. Some ridging moving into the Great Plains for tomorrow. So it should be a nice day through much of the central U.S., maybe some clouds out east with that troughing. And then you can see a strong jet moving in from the Pacific. That's going to be about Sunday, looking at maybe 170, 190 knots. Very long, straight zonal flow. That tends to concern me sometimes because that usually is a prelude to a dynamic intensification of the weather, like building of meridional flow, large troughs and ridges. And yeah, you can see, yeah, there it goes. Building a some ridging well up into British Columbia, and that could kick some of that polar air southward around probably late next week. And look at that troughing building in over the eastern U.S. right there. That's a sign that some cold air is coming south along and east of the Mississippi River. And we see things are much less zonal, more meridional, as we start out the following week around the 10th. So we could see a return to some very energetic and interesting weather systems, especially when this next jet max crosses into the plains. So maybe some very interesting weather around the 13th or 14th. And then the other factor this time of year is the moisture. We've really got to be concerned with that. Now, a lot of weather websites will give you relative humidity. For example, a chart like that. And that is not good for sampling moisture because relative humidity is dependent on two variables, the temperature and the dew point which is the absolute amount of moisture in the atmosphere. So we don't want to consider that. We need to look at the actual quantity of moisture, and that's what we get right here. That's the moisture coming up into the Rio Grande, and we'll run that chart sequence. You can see the low-level jet bringing that moisture up Saturday and Sunday. It looks like a weak front coming into North Texas early Saturday. And then a fast return to return flow once again. So that moisture does not get kicked out on Saturday. So it's coming up once again for Monday. There it is. The cyan indicating 60s dew points at 925 millibars. And that's probably going to set us up with a storm situation for Monday evening. And let's take a look at the sounding real quick. The mid-level wind's not really that strong. Instead of 70 or 80 like we had last week, it's more like 30 or 40. But there is still some strong 0 through 1 kilometer shear, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Also, this looks like a frontal inversion, so maybe a warm front down to the south. At this time, it's going to be hard to figure out where that is. 73 around College Station and then around Tyler. 64, that's quite a bit cooler. That looks like maybe a frontal inversion. So this may be a setup where we have a warm front, kind of like that. Let's see if I can draw that on there. And then the cold front, like that. And then the dry line, probably down in there somewhere. And the severe weather would be northeast of the low where we have the backed low-level flow. So there could be some severe weather in central and east Texas. Let's roll that forward. Going into Tuesday, 
Likely some of that severe weather will move into the southeast U.S. The low-level jet appears to strengthen to 45 to 50 knots across Georgia. Then, let's see, maybe some more thunderstorm activity Wednesday, and then a large front from Canada makes it south, probably a squall line by Thursday, and then things push out into the Atlantic. And you can see that we've got much drier air coming in from the north next weekend. And this little low tries to get going there in Texas, but feeble moisture return. That's going to be 40s dew points. So that's not going to do a whole lot. Big moisture return for the 12th, 13th, and that's what we're watching with that next trough coming in. Could be a good dry line day, maybe the 13th and 14th. And then we get into some frontal weather around the 14th and 15th. But that's still quite a ways off. And I'll just throw this out there for next week. We don't have any temperature records until then. But Wednesday, a lot of warm weather down in South Texas, up to 97 at Del Rio. And for Thursday, here we go again for California, more hot weather in the San Joaquin Valley down towards Los Angeles, 92 at Burbank. There's the satellite at this hour, cold air advection, some widespread open cell cumulus across Pennsylvania. That's an indicator of unstable weather. It is shallow convection. It's back in that post-frontal cold air rooted near the surface, but certainly some blustery and unsettled conditions. Further out west, not much going on, but Big Rig Steve is in Nebraska, right around here. He is right around Kearney, which is about right here. You can see some clouds building into the area. It looks like a mixture of stratocumulus and cirrus coming up from the south. And these look like elevated mid-level showers. Maybe some Virga, certainly not reaching the surface. And checking in on that surface map, he's near this frontal system. Yeah, he's right near an active weather area for a change. He's in that south wind area. There's Kearney, so he's about right here. But the dew point's quite low, 28, 26, 37. So he's right on the nose of that moisture. Suddenly wind's coming up. The low pressure area right here, the cold front, and the warm front, where is that? Uh, yeah, mostly 60s through that region. I guess I'd have to bring that warm front up like that. So anyway, he's right there. If we had more moisture, that would be a great area for viewing storms. And there he is, heading eastbound towards some feature over the freeway. I've seen this in some vlogger videos, but I don't know what that is. It's some sort of museum, I think. Well, what good timing. Anyway, let's check that out. I'm not sure what that is, but I think some of you viewers know, and I'll leave that for y'all to post in the comments. Anyway, we look up in the sky, we see stratocumulus up there at about three or 4,000 feet. That's gonna be that moisture coming in from the south, that way. And through the breaks, it looks like some maybe Virga in the distance. And I think this is where I saw that feature over the freeway. I think it was in this movie about Schmidt. It was a pretty good one. It was a Jack Nicholson movie where he travels out to Nebraska. Anyway, let's move on. And I did want to take a look at this stuff. This is that cold air advection regime across Pennsylvania. And if we animate that, you can see it flowing from northwest to southeast. Some low-topped anvils going up in eastern Pennsylvania. What does this look like on the infrared? Let's check that out. It doesn't look like very much because the tops are relatively warm. And here's a good chart. You can see that cold air advection flowing into that region. All this blue, that's cold air moving in. And we'll take a look at a sounding at this hour. The lapse rates are pretty much dry adiabatic all the way up to 11,000 feet. So a lot of those tops probably spreading out right in here. Those are kind of like miniature anvils. The cumulus going up 
in the five to 10,000 foot layer and spreading out, maybe producing a little bit of precip along with that. But with the dry conditions down near the surface, a lot of that is going to evaporate on the way down. And what does not evaporate will produce locally gusty winds. So for today, some storms possible in the Texas Panhandle. And that will be associated with this troughing coming out of the central Rockies. Some very cold conditions up there in the upper levels. For tomorrow, not very much going on. The tail end of the front helping to produce a few thunderstorms there in Florida. And then going into Sunday, pretty quiet, but the moisture return is going to raise some outside chances for thunderstorms on the high plains of Texas and New Mexico. Day four, that's going to be the big day we're going to be watching. See if we can return that. Yeah, there it is. That's going to be Monday. Severe risk in central and east Texas, shifting east into the afflicted area from a couple of days ago there. So they're going to get it again on Tuesday next week, then Wednesday moving up to Birmingham and Atlanta, and then a little bit of a break for late next week. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you very much for joining. I'll leave you with some more footage from Greg showing Castroville last night. Very scenic. Hope you all have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.